Chris Schaefer. The Paid Search Podcast is the place where we talk Google Ads, pay-per-click, and digital marketing strategies for business owners and PPC professionals out there. This is the 160th episode. Like I said, I'm joined by the great this is the 159th episode. <laughs> As I said, I'm joined by the great Chris Schaefer. Chris, how's it going today? Uh, Jason, we're, we, like you've said before, international. Like I, I'm going through the questions that we're going to answer today. I mean, and international questions from people around the world. It's so cool um, to, to hear from you guys. I don't speak your language, but you are kind enough to listen in my language and answer or send questions in my language. Otherwise, I wouldn't be able to answer them. So it's so, so cool. So we have lots of cool, interesting questions, uh, but we all speak the language of Google ads. So we're all kumbaya all together. Um, all right. So today we are going to talk about answers to your questions. But before I get to that, I want to mention our best friend, Optio. Optio keeps me in line. It keeps many of our listeners in line. Many of our subscribers have gone out and tried it out. You should too. Six week extended trial, opteo.com slash PSP. And what does it do? It keeps your campaigns going without giant uh uh-ohs. You're going along, you're managing your campaigns and you have multiple clients, or maybe you're just one guy who's trying to manage a really big campaign that's complicated. The ad stopped. Uh, you're not spending your budget. You have some uh, improvements that you completely didn't even consider. Uh, some new keywords that you could add that you hadn't considered. All these things, Optio can help you get that done and get it done quickly. Nice graphical interfaces, uh, push button uh, to get things done. It's outside of Google Ads, but that's a good thing because sometimes you can't get it done quickly in the Google Ads interface. This is a system to help you get it done quicker opteo.com slash PSP. The reason you need to go to that is because you can get a six week extended trial. Tell them you heard about it from our show. Tell them that Chris is your favorite friend and you'll get a six week extended trial. Thanks for checking them out. So Jason. Yes. You ready to put your thinking cap on? Oh, I'm ready. I'm ready. But, uh, but first questions. We are in the top 700 business podcast, overall business in the United States on uh, Apple Podcasts. And uh, we have a review we got this week um, that I'll get to in a few weeks uh, when I re- read the review of the week. But basically said this is one of the best podcasts out there, not just pay-per-click podcast. And he said he wow. heard that from the host. And then he just left us five stars. <laughs> So I want to grow this podcast. We're not a PPC podcast, Chris. We're an everything podcast, and I want to dominate. So near the top wow. 200 in business, we're in the top to, uh, near like one, maybe the top 100 or 120 in uh, marketing and management. So we're going to keep growing. The way we grow is because you guys leave reviews on all Apple Podcasts and all the review places, but that's primarily where all the reviews are. And when you guys leave more reviews, it helps us grow the show because then their algorithm shares the show with more people. And it's interesting, Chris, we've been doing this for almost probably three years now, or maybe over three years, uh, going to get up to 200 episodes soon. And we still have people every single day that are just finding out about the show and uh, just realizing about how much uh, great content we have. So we appreciate you guys' reviews. Um, I'm going to read one this week from Valet GTZZ. Um, Valet on uh, Apple Podcast. <laughs> On uh, in the United States of America, five stars, and they said game changer for PPC professionals. Hi, Chris and Jason. I really appreciate your tips and insights. You've helped me tremendously as I transition to PPC freelancing. You guys are essentially my team. LOL. Thanks, guys. Oh, well, he uh, said LOL. That means lots of love. That's nice oh. of him. Laugh out loud. I was just thinking this week. Do you remember Burb? Be right back. I use and that I all message. the time. What do you mean I remember it? Like, I st- is that not cool anymore? No, no one I, uses that anymore. And uh, it just shows uh, how much of a connected nonstop world we are because be right back. That doesn't happen anymore because we're always connected. And I'm sure that's healthy. Wow. So, Chris. So profound. A big Q&A today, like a big Q&A. And uh, we're going to get through it. And uh, you, you, were, you broke these questions up into 
AdWords questions, strategy questions, tips questions, advice questions, and you uh, then broke them up into business questions, the business of PPC. And we're going to answer some of those on the Patreon channel. $2 a month, we do an after show every week, and you guys can find a link at the website, paidsearchpodcast.com, for that after show. So, Chris, have you read through my notes in the question and answer document? No. I want it to be a complete surprise. Okay. I, I didn't want to spoil anything, except right. for the stuff that was all caps. I, you know, my eye immediately went yep. to that. But uh, before we get to reading, we'll start with uh, Hal from L.A. who has uh, a question. And uh, Jason, I didn't label who yeah. is going to answer. It, totally missed but, this question because uh, you didn't highlight it. Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry. Uh, I realized I didn't highlight it, but I'm going to start with that one. And uh, here we go. Hey, everyone. My name's Hal, calling from L.A. Love the show. Happy you finally got the Patreon going. And I, I'm working to do some ads for a psychologist in Maryland. Um, you know, we got about over 2 million people in his, his area. And when I run these keywords for broad match, like depression, anxiety, counselor, psychologist, I'm getting 5,000, 2,000, you know, low numbers for the whole month. And I'm just wondering, like, am I missing something? Is, are people just not searching? Um, well, let me answer You know, me. and he offers the other thing. You know, we could, he does work with people remotely, but who signs up to work with a psychologist over a Google ad that doesn't live near them? For so sure. I'd love to hear <laughs> your thoughts on how to make this happen. And lastly, I'm curious if Chris is available for life coaching. Um, you know, I'd love to sign up and please share Oh, uh, all right, Hal. Nice joke at the end. Chris, let me tell you something. I have a client, great client down in Texas, and uh, we launched a few months ago. We were doing a call this week, going over the first couple of months, we get the monthly report, and I'm trying to give this man good Google Ads advice, and he's just giggling, and he's interrupting me going, <laughs> when are you going to get married? <laughs> when are you going to get married, Jason? <laughs> because, of, because of these BS uh, jokes you do on the show. So enough with the life coaching, enough with the marriage, enough with that kind of talk. I'm going to say it now, and I'm going to say it to everybody. If you bring that topic up again, I'm going to hit back 10 times harder, and you're not going to like what you hear, okay? So don't bring it up again. Don't bring it, then don't disrespect my relationship. I would never disrespect your relationship with your wife, ever. This is definitely not true. Ever. That is that is definitely not true, but thank you. Where is so she much. right now? Where is she right now? She, she she's right there. She's that's always what you, that's what you me. think. The reason I'm asking you that, and maybe we'll cut this, maybe you won't, because you don't know what's <laughs> going on in your life, Chris. Your life is spinning out of control. Turn around, non disrespect. Turn around. You just had this stupid uh -huh. uh, piece of technology go off and distract me. Is that something you want on camera? <laughs> that little look. I'm not kidding. Look on your shelf. <laughs> This thing, but that thing, it just lit up for a second. You are. <laughs> are you okay with that? Is that the way you run your life? As you can tell from my background, I run my life clean. I know everything that's going on behind my back at all times. Oh my so don't gosh. you ever, is, don't you ever, nobody's gonna hear don't, this. don't you ever bring that up again, or you're gonna get hit okay. back ten times harder. That I'm just putting right. it out there as a warning. Okay. Okay. I'm a nice right, guy. You. Don't push me. All right. Let's answer house question. What caught my ear, Chris, in that question is you said 3,000, three, I know, I know, 3,000, 5,000 searches a month in the state of Maryland for psychologists near me, psychologists, whatever. That tells me how is in the keyword planner. How? Mm. It's search only for that one keyword. But people search for different keywords, psychologists near me, psychologists in Baltimore, yeah. Therapists in Baltimore, and then they search for thousands and millions of long tail keywords that your phrase match right. keywords will catch and broad match modify. So if that's what's going on, get out of the keyword planner and start advertising. If you're advertising and you're only getting 3,000, 5,000 impressions, and it doesn't seem like you're able to spend your full budget of, I'm assuming, 500, 1,000, 1,500 a month, then you got to look at impression share. Why are you, why is your impression share not 100% if it's not? Is it because of rank? Then look at your position. Well, we still can. Are you in position five, position four, and you're not showing up high enough to get clicked? Or you're not showing up on enough searches because your bids are so low, you're losing it to rank? Um, do you have it super locked down with your schedule? Did this guy tell you, I only want people in one zip code? Um, is it your location? Is it the schedule? 
Are you running only exact match keywords? Maybe run some phrase match, see what comes in, some broad match modified. Chris, is that what you would be thinking? Yeah, I think yeah, I think you're right. I think uh, how the answer to something like this. I've worked with uh, this industry before, and I find that it it's um, it seems like it's unique uh, in that people don't tend to search for one specific thing. There's a lot of high funnel, like what's wrong with me kind of stuff, or what kind of treatment should I do for this? And then there's super low funnel where people are looking for family psychologist near this that helps with dogs, you know, like dog fear or something. I mean, it's like super specific long tail. So it seems like that middle ground doesn't happen a lot. So I would definitely use, you know, some, some high funnel stuff and uh, use modified broad to try and catch the longer tail. You know, you might just do like psychologist modified broad just to see what you can grab. Yeah. I was just saying that Chris, like how, like look at the next three months. If he spends 500, 1500 a month, the person can afford to do to gather some data. So run yeah, psychologist phrase match, run therapist phrase match, run some broad match modified, even maybe try pure broad a little bit with low bids, see what comes in, gather up a bunch of search terms, see the ways people are searching for things and then create a nice keyword list from that. And then after the first three months, once you've done gathering information, you can, you'll probably be able to find the exact kind of searches he wants for the kind of, uh, practices that he offers. Yeah. All right. So here we go. First uh, written she. question um, is uh, Brent from Portland, Oregon. Brent says, Hey guys, long time listener, first time commenter. Uh, in episode 151, you said that income based targeting is just based on zip code. I know that income uh, targeting used to be based on zip code, but from what I understand, this has changed. Income now determined by a wide variety of data, such as third party data and activity on Google. Jason, do you have anything nice to say to Brent? Something nice? Um, what's his question? Well, it, I, I, but you wrote notes. So I know, but what's, I'm just wondering like, what's the question? Like I know well, the that question, the question is, He's he, well, yeah. I cut out some of the question, but I'd love to hear the podcast that uh, does a dive deep into income remarketing. And his question is like, where is it coming oh, income, from? Is it income based? Oh, okay. No, well, it, no, no. Who cares? Who cares, Chris? It. So my point is, I looked this up today. I tried to find out where their information comes from because yes, you and I said zip codes. Zip codes. By the way, that was years ago. Number one. Okay. Yeah. Years ago. Um, and because he says episode one fifty one. Um, we were also talking about that way long time ago. And that's the way we thought it was based on because at the time when we were doing a podcast a long, long time ago, that income stuff was part of the location targeting. It wasn't this nice new audience section. It was part of the location targeting and um, it, it was based on zip codes. Now you're saying it's not, I looked up uh, what, like, what it's based on and I could not find in the Google documentation what it's based on. So I don't want to hear from anybody what it's based on. What, how would anybody know what that information is based on if Google's not telling us? Okay. Yeah. So yeah. I don't trust I mean, anybody uh, to, to write a blog or whatever and tell me what that's based on. If Google's not saying it, I'm not going to spend my five minutes of my life listening to someone who's just, who's not, I mean, how do they even know that? So if Google's not saying it, no one knows it. So my point is who cares what it's based on? Google's saying that's what it is. And does it work? Does it not work? I don't know. Test it out. I can tell you, we just went through the trap door series. And by the way, for all you hardcore Jason Rothman fans of this podcast, oh. I had more trap doors for you. I had way more trap doors for you that I came up with at four in the morning and I sent Chris an email. He goes, Oh, these are nice. Let's bank them for months from now. Cause I want to do a Q and a. So <laughs> I tried to give you guys more trap doors, but he wouldn't let me this week. Um, but I got more trap doors, but we just went through the trap doors and we didn't include this, but one of them, I thought, or maybe we did screwing around with income bids, Chris, that sounds yeah. like a trap door to me. I can tell you yeah. the reason I'm a little bit negative on this is because it sounds so perfect to just go, Oh yeah. Uh, and then the example Brent gives is lawyers only want to work with people who can afford their services. Yeah. Wouldn't that just be awesome if you could just tell Google only show it to people who can afford my client services. And it seems so mm -hmm. enticing but that's just not my experience with it. it no. I have not had a very positive experience with this. 
hasn't really moved the needle for me. There's a lot of weird situations that come up, like the top 20% of income is getting a worse cost per conversion than the top 20 to 30% of income. So you go, well, should we, should we not target the top 20 to 30% of income because the top 20% is better than them? Or should we go with where the, we're getting a good cost per conversion? It's just like, I don't know. I, I've just gotten to the point, Chris, where I do not put a ton of stock in this. If a client is really focused on this, maybe I'll turn off the bottom 50%. Um, but I, other than that, I'm not messing with this too much. But Brent, play around with it, test things out, run an experiment, run two campaigns. One targets the top 20%, one targets the top 20 to 40%. You can play around with it and test the data. But um, I just haven't, haven't been motivated yeah. to play around with it too much, Chris, after early kind of experiences where it just didn't seem to be doing that much for me. And it kind of messed me up a few times where I, I made too many bid adjustments and I didn't like the results that came in. All right. So that was, uh, Jason, uh, const const some, uh, some constructive criticism. That was way too long of an answer. If we're going to get through all these in this episode, I'm giving so, the people uh, what they want. I'm giving the people what they want. Okay. Next question comes from Judon from Hong Kong. Recently, Chris, one out of every six people in Hong Kong was in the street. Yes. For I, protest. Mm -hmm, Very yes. interesting. We, Big things going on in yes. Hong Kong. And, okay. uh, I don't know. I read the paper. Hello. I just watched your video on YouTube for dynamic keyword insertion ads. <sighs> Sorry. Uh, I have two ad groups. Each ad group has four ads as the keyword insertion can be used in headline description. If I use keyword insertion for all four of these ads on headline with different keywords, would these four ads conflict or block some relevant ads to be triggered? Would it decrease the impressions? Chris, when I read this, I literally had not thought of the word dynamic keyword inser insertion in like over a year. And I, I don't even yeah. know if it's still a thing in Google. Yeah, it, it is. Um, so thanks for your question. Uh, it sounds like you're, you're, you're confusing targeting with ad copy. Um, so the, the idea here is that the dynamic keyword insertion, if you had uh, multiple keywords, let's say you had five keywords in one ad group and then you had four ads, um, and the keywords were, you know, X, Y, and Z, and the ads were all slightly different, but they had some dynamic keyword insertion in the headline and the description. Um, it does not affect your targeting at all. It does not limit your impressions, it does not change your targeting. The dynamic keyword insertion, just because it says dynamic keyword insertion, that does not mean that it changes any way that where, how your ads are shown, where your ads are shown. Um, whether you get an impression or not, it's not going to affect your, uh, your quality score because that's static based on your default text that you're going to have in there. Um, it's, it, it's not going to matter. So whether you use dynamic keyword assertion or not is not going to change, uh, that factor. What does change the factor? I mean, this isn't the question you asked you don't, but what, what I think it does change is that you, you lose control of your, your ad copy. You know, I, I think that what you have to do is ask, why am I doing this? Why would you have multiple ads with multiple, um, you know, dynamic keyword insertion? Why not take one of those keywords? If it's, if it's so important that it shows up in the headline, take one of those keywords, create its own ad group and write one ad for that. You know, I'm not advocating you do that 500 times like a skag, but, um, the idea is, you know, maybe if you have a few of those, create an ad group just for that and, 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 you know, write an ad just for that. I, that's the way Jason and I tend to build our campaigns. Um, just because more control and more precision with ads rather than just letting the system dynamically generate your headlines for you through that, the DKI inserter. Chris, I mean, just think about how many parts of the ads are now. That's why I was thinking, it, does this thing even exist? Because they're so, the ads are getting so big that it just seems hard to uh, just mix in a lot of that. And why? Because you have so many options. The one thing I would say, Chris, you just lose control, like you said, and you got to be careful because what if you're not putting your keywords in themed ad groups and you have two keywords in the same ad group that are like veterinarian for dogs, veterinarian for cats. And then yeah. what, and then Google could put either of those if the person searched it in the ad and it's like, does the rest of the ad match that? I don't know. It just, it's not something yeah. I, I focus on. So Chris, next question is read by you. Luke from Newcastle, Australia. 
All right. So Luke from Newcastle, Australia. Yeah. We, th- this is these, these we've, we've emailed this cool couple from Australia before big fans, big fans. Yep. So thanks for reaching out, Luke. Um, we have a, uh, they say we have a client whose most important leads are calls. They have a nicely built up, built out website, but at the end of the day, 99% of the conversions are via phone calls from their page oh, where they ask for more information. Um, I was thinking of running uh, call only ads in parallel to expanded text ads. Do you ever run call only ads with the expanded text ads and just run them together and let Google do its thing? As I'm now eliminating any mobile devices coming to the website, but potentially increasing their chance of a conversion. Jason, I think this is a great question for you because I've learned a bit about call only from you. Yeah, Chris, uh, you can tell uh, by Luke's question that he's like reading my mind. So it's a guy who's definitely listened to all of our to date insider episodes at pinsearchpodcast.com slash insider because he said, and let Google do its thing. That's exactly what I do, Luke. Um, Sometimes when a client really wants call only and we're confident it's going to work well, we run only, only call only ads. And the only things we're running are call only. But more recently, as Google has changed things around in the new interface, and you don't have to, I don't even think it exists anymore. You don't set up your own like individual call only campaign. You just have the same campaign, but you put call only ads in it or you put expanded text ads in it. Now that everything can go together, that's what I find myself doing a lot, Luke. Um, When we don't know if there's gonna be enough volume on call only or how call only is gonna work out for that industry or that client or that area, but the client does want calls, what I like to do is I like to mix in call only ads alongside expanded text ads in the same ad group and let them let them do their thing and then gather data and see how they perform. I also like to put an advanced bid adjustment, the calls bid adjustment up, maybe 20%, 30%, 25%, something like that. That increases not only call extensions would would be good because your client wants calls, but it also increases the bids on the call only ads. It makes them more likely to show up as I understand it. Um, and the final thing I would say, so yes, definitely try that out. There's nothing wrong with running them together and gathering data. The other thing I would say is if they really want calls, sometimes call only can lead to a little bit of low volume. Sometimes it can be expensive. There's some issues sometimes. So you know what you can do? You can control your environment, create a great landing page, model it after their website. It can be a mini website, multiple landing pages together with the menu and just take the form off of them put a huge phone number on there and don't let the users be able to fill out a form. Let the only thing they can do is call you, call you from the number on the landing page. And that way you can get the volume, the uh, basically the volume that comes with expanded text ads and the call extension on them and still run expanded text ads because you're taking people to a landing page with the big phone number. So if call only is not working out great on its own or either mixed in, maybe play around with the landing page and take away the form and force those calls to come through. Great right. answer. Go ahead. Great yeah, answer, it was huh, nothing Chris? to add. Go Can you with tell it. me how great it was? It was so great that uh, I, I have nothing to add. By the way, we started the show. You said you guys were a worldwide show. Your questions are coming from all over the world. Like pretty much every foreign question we had on this episode, Chris, comes from an English speaking place. Yeah. I had to point out that inconsistency. Well, well, Hong Kong, I mean, they, they speak other languages. Glasgow, Australia, New Zealand, right. Kentucky. Right. Okay. Kentucky. <laughs> Glenn from Glasgow. Hey, guys. First of all, thank you for the fantastic podcast. I've been using Google Ads for many years now but I still learn something new from each of your episodes. I ha- That's a nice compliment because sometimes I'm yes. like, Chris, I don't know about this one. I have yeah. a query that I would like your opinion on. Oh, they used to be called search queries. Now they're called search terms. Little trivia. Yeah. Query. If I have a, yeah, queries. If I have a countrywide campaign but want to have targeted ads for one particular city, how should this be set up? And he goes through five options. Make keywords, broad match, and modified in the hope that the city will be picked up when the user search. I don't think Chris is going to like that one. Create a new (laughs) ad group for the city and insert the city in the keywords and ad copy. Create a new ad group for the city and leave the keywords as broad match modified, but put the city in the ad copy. 
create a new campaign with a location set for the city and leave the keywords and ad copy as normal. Create a new campaign with a location <laughs> set for the city and edit the keywords and ad copy to include it in, 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 to include the city. Uh, thank you for your question, Glenn. I'm very excited to see how Chris answered this and I recommend to all the ladies out there uh, with Glenn, never cheat on Glenn because he is mm. going through all the angles with your little stories about where you were last night. He's got every scenario <laughs> covered and you're not getting anything by Glenn. So Chris, uh, a- you, you want to target cities? <laughs> uh, what are we doing here? Glenn is a very thorough guy. Yeah. I mean, a, a numbered list, just beautiful. Thank you, Glenn. So, um, all right. Great question. Um, and I'll, t- I'll tell you, I'll tell you one thing. Um, it really depends on how, critical it is that you get a super strong search impression share. If you are, you know, if this is something that is just absolute priority for you or your client to make sure you show up, I might actually do two of these things. Number one, I don't recommend where you said make your keywords broad match in the hope that the city will just be picked up. So, so, you know, mixing them in there and, and hoping that they work. I, I don't think that would necessarily work. My, my second tier up, if you move into something where I want to be a little more aggressive, what I would try is your, your scenario where you described um, have, the, have a new ad group in that campaign uh, and have broad match modifier keywords. So it's you know, city and, uh, in, and then the service as broad match modified um, and then put the city name into those ads. I think that's the next level up. Highest tier level, most aggressive, probably because uh, it's going to take the most amount of work, is then to create a new campaign and set that cam- campaign up in the way that you have those, uh, those keywords targeted uh, with the city name, broad match modified, and you're targeting the city and you have normal keywords that don't target the city and just have the service and they all have the city name in them. So that's like the highest tier. That's the most aggressive. You're going to, tar- you're going to target anyone within a hundred mile radius that uses the city name. And you're going to target anyone within a 25, 25 mile radius that uses the service name. So that's a, you know, that that's the hardest most aggressive way to do things. Uh, you know, the most effort is going to take the most management because you, now you have a whole new campaign and then imagine what you're going to get, get yourself into if uh, you know, there's 50 of these to do, you know, if, if, if they, they say, well, that works great. Let's do the top 50 c- cities uh, in the U S I mean, you're hearing groans because we've been there. I mean, it's, it's exhausting. It's, you know, and, and so I would say, my favorite would probably be with the lower tier where you just put those keywords in an ad group and if maybe put a little bit higher bid on those. And if you get a campaign that picks them up, you know, you're getting some clicks on them, then that's great. But if the client's super gung, gung-ho about, you know, I got to show up on these, I want 100% search impression here in this city and this zip code, this county, then, you know, you may have to go with the hardcore stuff. But uh, it's not, it, I would not say it's your default. You know, unless you're getting pushed that direction, I would not suggest it. Jason, Chris, uh, I have a I have a quick great suggestion in terms of setup, but I want your feedback on management because it gets a little scary with management. If you have say ten, uh, if you have three cities, it's not a big deal anyway because it's only three cities. But say you have ten or twenty cities, and or more, um, and you want the ads. To me, what's important is the ad copy, the ad copy matching that city. So if it's if it's Charlotte, North Carolina, and People are searching there for a mover. I don't care if they search the word mover, long distance mover, movers in Charlotte. As long as the ad says movers in Charlotte and uses the city name, that's what's important uh, yeah. in terms of this whole city thing. So what you can do, you can create a campaign, great keywords. Uh, you can either include city names. Yeah, include city names. So what you do, you target one city. The ads say Charlotte. The keywords say Charlotte. All you mm-hmm. have to do, go to editor, copy and paste it 50 times, Whatever, however many you need, and then just on each city, go to the ads, go to the keywords, and find and replace Charlotte to the next city. And then on the third campaign, find and replace Charlotte on the keywords and ads to the next city. That's easy, city. pretty easy on setup. Chris, what happens on management? And then things get yeah, a little sticky. I mean, well, I mean, 
keep in mind you said replace, but you also have to ch replace the URL. You have to replace any phone numbers that are different. You have to change true, all the geographic true. targeting for those. True. So, I mean, oh my gosh, you're right. True. Oh man, you're true. So I would never do this. Yeah, you're right. This sucks. Yeah. yeah this should suck. <laughs> so, it, I guess it depends on how many cities it is. Yeah. It, the thing is, the more you do that, the more you're up for user error and accidentally targeting the wrong city or going to the wrong URL. And then just like you said, then you start getting into management. Like, oh, you know, this keyword showing. No, no, might so even be Sla slap the person that came up with this idea because, Chris, let's, <laughs> let's get back to let's basics see. here. If someone in city two does a search and the, the ad says, we serve people in these metros, blah, 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 and the city's in there or local movers in like – just focus on the right searches, get ad copy that makes yeah. sense and it's going to work well. And all the time you're taking, going into all this, building it up, how to manage it, all this kind of stuff. That's where people like me and Chris sneak in, start gathering data, run our campaign and get great results. Yeah. So probably well, making it a little are, too we, complex and it needs to be. While you're building your super complex campaign, we're, we're already making getting, money. Clicks, yeah. getting leads. So yeah, I mean, that, that's, that's the deal. So, I mean, the thing is, I would consider the, the most aggressive plan to be some a button that's under glass and requires two keys to unlock. You know, I mean, like, don't do this unless you're forced yeah. and you just have to do it because the, the setup, the management are all overcomplicated and it's not worth the effort. All right, so Benjamin from Auckland, speaking of international again, I think they speak Hebrew or something there. It's awesome. All right, so hello, gents. That's what they say. That's Hebrew, I think. Uh, when you encounter a campaign with a load of broad match keywords, do you keep the data by pausing the keywords and copying and pasting the keywords and then editing the new keywords to be modified broad uh, phrase or exact match? So how do you deal? I, I know you've come across plenty of campaigns like me that just are full out broad and, and what do you do with those? How do you deal with a, you know, a junk campaign like that to improve it? I don't deal with filth. I don't deal with junk. And Chris Schaefer, I don't deal with prior campaigns. Okay. I'm the best Google ads ah. manager in the planet. Yep. And I could go on and on about some other things, but I won't because we're going to keep this one tight. Screw the old data. I don't dirty up my vision, Chris, with the old garbage. I had a client this week that's a, a new client. They said they, they're going to, they sell hot tubs. They say, Hey, Jason, uh, we're having a call. Hey, we got this whole campaign. Do you want us to send it to you? Do you want to access? Blah, blah, blah. No, I don't. It's, and I told him straight up, it's not going to do anything for me. The way you're talking, I already know all the mistakes they were making. We're not going to go down that road. It's not going to help at all. I build new houses from the ground up. I don't try to salvage horrible, no. junked out houses. So I would say, Benjamin, I don't do this. I definitely don't like, uh, don't copy the keywords and all that kind of stuff. Now, the only thing here is, Chris, if I'm working with a new client and they have a campaign that's in decent shape and they say it's working well, I copy and paste it and I go from there with a, the with a copy and paste it campaign because I want to leave their mm -hmm. old campaign for them untouched so they yep. always have it. But that's a very rare situation when things are going well for them. And by the way, if things are going well, why are they calling me? So calling I don't run me? into that very often. If, if it was a bad campaign, I leave it alone. I would say the only thing... I'd be interested in, or you could be interested in Benjamin, have them download the search terms for like the last, uh, last two months, last six months, last year. And what you can get from that are the search terms, see where they were showing up on the wrong things, maybe get some keyword ideas, and then you'll get the cost per click data and the conversion data in there as well if you download it. So that's all I would need is, is uh, search terms. Yeah. So next question, Chris, from Katie. Katie. Hi guys, I'm a new wow. listener and love the show. I'm also new to Google AdWords, like we are talking a few weeks. What is the best advice you have for someone just starting out? What tools or training do you recommend other than the content Google itself offers? Also interested in any mentoring or coaching programs that you can pay <laughs> by the hour or a monthly fee for again, y'all rock. Katie, I'm going to answer your question. I'm going to take this over for Chris. So Katie, no, no, uh, no. number one, the, the content Google itself offers is fantastic. So go to Google's help section, search Google ads, help go to the help section. Anything you could possibly want in there is in there. There's so much you can learn so much technical information. I, I still go through it myself every week, go through it. Um, uh, paid search podcasts, I would listen to all our episodes. So most of them are on YouTube. We sell them on our website, but they're on YouTube for free. 
we offer a lot uh, in terms of just getting a feel for AdWords, some experience. Chris, anything else besides Google's help and, and our great show? Yeah, no, I mean, I would, um, Katie, I would focus on basics. I, I would make sure that you completely understand the purpose behind ad groups, campaigns, keywords, you know, what you're supposed to do with search terms, you know, how negative keywords work, you know, wh whether you should use a phrase, exact, broad, negative. Keep it keyword. simple. Like, like most people don't understand that basic. And then once you understand that, once you understand all the tools, understand what your, what the purpose behind Google ads is and, and how you use those tool, tools to accomplish the number one thing that you're supposed to do. Not, not lead generation, but before that happens, it has to be traffic quality. You have to make sure that every bit of traffic coming from Google is qualified. That's what, I mean, that, that's what it's all about. So could, Chris, yeah, I mean, can I say something to Katie? We have a serious opportunity. She has a serious opportunity to be one of the best AdWords managers on the planet. And I'm not kidding, Chris. I'm literally not kidding. She is coming into Google ads in the year 2019 with all that information from Google out there, with all of our podcasts and other people, there's a lot of great content. Your mind, Katie, right now is pure. You have not been corrupted <laughs> by stupid, overly technical, going down the rabbit hole things like dynamic keyword insertion, like income targeting, all this stuff where you can just go down, uh, all the bidding strategies, all this kind of stuff. Your mind is pure. Okay, so you're still thinking about businesses. You're still thinking about things that actually matter out there. Getting clients, customers into their business to give them money. You're still in that mindset. So don't get corrupted, Katie. Focus on the customer. Take it offline. What are people using Google for? They're searching. Okay, what would someone search for if they needed a plumber? Search terms, bids, cost per conversion, leads, Keep it simple, Katie. You have so much potential because you have not been corrupted. Think about it from a business owner perspective. Think about it from your client's perspective. Think about it from the search user's perspective. And then use that knowledge and figure out how to accomplish those goals on Google Ads. Work that direction. Don't go into the Google Ads, all technical stuff, and then work back out. I think she's got a great opportunity here, Chris. Pure yeah, good point. business. Business. All right, so Shane from Columbus, Ohio. Shane says, hey, Chris and Jason, we are hoping to gain further insight as to where conversions are happening in relation to the position of the ad. Uh, for example, if a campaign is running and has a dozen conversions for the month, how could we segment the data to see the position uh, of, of the ad where it was for each of those conversions? So, uh, Shane, before I send the question off to Jason, who uh, has already written a very colorful answer, which I'm sure he will filter. Um, let me say, uh, although Jason will give a different answer, I'm going to tell you, I have had this, Jason, sometimes we have to answer these questions because the client is insisting and there. I've had instances where I had to answer this question and I'll tell you how I did it in, in a, in a macro sense. I downloaded data from like 60 days and uh, at the, at the search term level for everything that had a conversion. I then pulled all of that into one spreadsheet and aggregated all the data about if there was one conversion uh, and one click, where was the position for that one conversion and one click? And then I put that and aggregated it out to how many clicks happened in first position, how many clicks happened in second, third, fourth, stuff like that. So that's the only way I was able to do it. And it was a very manual process. Um, there's no tool that I've ever found that can give you that pure information because sometimes data is nice to have. And sometimes it's just kind of nice and clean to show that, but Jason's going to give you a different point of view. Let's make it snappy. No, you said it, Chris. I'll keep my thoughts to myself. <laughs> what? What? You? Ha okay. Do you Are have you kids? Do you have kids, Chris? Do I? Of course I have. Then why don't you try being a father for five minutes instead of spending your time downloading and talking about sheets and positions and then manually. Do what? what are you doing? Dude? Who do you work for? What? Do you work for a bunch of Google ads managers? Like, do you work for professional Google ads people that just abuse you and every little thought in their head about what if the data said this? What if the data said that? I wonder what happens with this. They just make you do it all day. 
what kind of self-respecting business owner was asking you this question? Mm. Who cares what position they were from? Manage your account. Focus on the leads. Focus on the cost per lead. What are we doing here? What are we doing here, Chris? I, <laughs> what? No, seriously. What value? It's, no, seriously. No, seriously. No, seriously. No, seriously. I need you to stop right now, right now, right now, right now, right now, right <laughs> now. Seriously. What does this provide, Chris? It's what, okay. What you really want to know? Yes. Okay, I want to so know. I want to okay, know. So I'm gonna I'm going to answer very precisely. So the, the thing is, uh, I'll tell you the reasoning behind it. I had a client who was insisting that they always be first. And my only argument was, well, listen, it might be a so little more. Let them be first. Uh, Spend the money, Chris. Well, because People don't change because their, their mind. Are going down. He's saying our conversions are going down. I want to be first all the time because, you know, we're going to sell. And then my comment was, you know, you may perform better. You might actually get more conversions a little lower in the positions. What if we're in second position? And then I had the data to show him that, which, hey, some of us really want to explain to our clients instead of slapping them in the head and saying, listen to me. I'm I don't the slap boss my the clients. I don't slap my clients. The only slaps we do are high verbally. effing fives because Verbal. we're making a bunch of money. That's the only Verbal slaps we do are high fives <laughs> and pats on the rear ends because we're making money out here in the real world, Chris. By the way, it's, and Chris, while I'm talking, please read to yourself my answer, what I wrote out, because I think you- I will. am not reading that. Oh, I've already read it. I cannot. I cannot <laughs> okay, Chris. That. But, but the, at the end, of my, the end of my answer, okay, well, you guys are doing this, and I'm doing high fives with my, with my clients. Google mm -hmm. is in the process of taking the average position away anyway, it so it's happened. over. It hasn't happened. It's over. It's going away. You're not even going to be able to do these things to yourselves in a few months anyway. They're sunsetting it. They're sunsetting it, so it's going away anyway. Ava Passionate. From great Raleigh. debate. We need to have a great debate about something because I want to smack you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because right. the last one went so well for you, but okay, go ahead. Let's let's go. A I'm from two and Raleigh, I'm two and, and I've taken the tough and tougher positions both times. It's easy to make fun of skagging. Okay, it's hard. It's really hard to uh, to uh, to promote skagging and and uh, make it sound good after you've been through that whole cycle yourself and you realize how stupid you were because I was there once. Next question from Abe from Raleigh, North Carolina. I watch your podcast on YouTube and enjoy the unique knowledge you share, Jason. I have a question for you uh, both, though. Uh, what? Read is your the ego really been... that small? Is it really <laughs> that big, I should say, in that sense that, in that you can't let me make a little joke when the whole audience knows I'm just kidding? You're no, really that sensitive, Chris? <laughs> Everyone knew that was a joke. All right. I watch your podcast on YouTube and enjoy the unique knowledge you share. I have a question for you all. How do you track conversions? Do you use Google Tag Manager or Google Analytics? And I'm going to throw in or straight Google ads conversion code from the Google ads account. I have used both. He's saying Google tag manager and Google analytics. I want to know what is more efficient for you all. Okay. So first of all, I'm highly offended that you did not uh, say y'all uh, cause you are from North Carolina. Um, but anyway, um, Abe, it, 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 I, I prefer, um, Google Analytics, because it's something that personally I can control and I don't have to get the website involved, okay? So easiest for me, always, if they have Google Analytics on the site, it all works, assuming all their tags are working properly, which nowadays doesn't seem to be very common. Um, that's the preference because I can just put a URL in of, you know, slash purchase complete thank you, and then that's the thank you page, done. Conversion imported into Google Ads and I'm done. The next one down that I uh, would prefer is Google Tag Manager because sometimes I can very easily create uh, a tracking directly in Google Tag Manager and get it done. Um, that's that's simple enough. The the least the one that I that I like the least is uh, the conversion tracking directly in Google Ads. It's complicated. Requires jumping into uh, to the oh. website or, or, you know, getting into the code, which I do not want to do. I don't do. Um, so that's my least favorite. So that's, that's my order of preference. I imagine Jason, you're probably the same way. 
Uh, yeah, uh, no, no, I'm not at all. Um, I, I don't oh. use Google Tag Manager. Don't like it. Have not had good experience with, with it. Has made things more yeah. complicated than I thought they were without it. And on top of that, there were some types of conversions like calls from website that we had a problem using Google Tag Manager for. So my preference is Google Analytics. The reason why is because I'm very used to it. We have a great episode out there about Google Analytics. I'm an expert in analytics. I love it. And the nice thing about it is besides the ease of it, is like Chris said, the control, and there's so much other data that you can play around with when you get those conversions in Google Analytics. And then I, call me old fashioned, I like uh, putting the code on the site, uh, seeing it there, um, and uh, that's me. So uh, Chris, yeah. go ahead with the next question. We're gonna knock these right, things yeah. out. Let's go, let's go. We have three questions left. Um, and before I say this, uh, before I jump into this one, I want to say thanks to our sponsor, Optio. They have got to go. They've got to jump into some accounts. They've stuck around as long as they could, you know, but they're busy guys. They're building software for us to succeed. If you want to be a part of that success that they're generating with this amazing software, opteo.com slash PSP, you can use a six-week extended trial for free. For free. Just because you're a paid church podcast listener, uh, check it out. Uh, I, we talk about it every day or every week. Um, and uh, I had a lot of people that contact me and tell me they like it, that they continue to use it even past the free period. It's worth the investment for them. Check it out. It lets them know that, you know, that uh, they should keep sponsoring us. And if you guys want to keep helping us, you help them. That's how it works. So Greg from Michigan says in an earlier podcast you guys mentioned some of your clients run competitor campaigns as we've said before they have great ideas quote unquote um i believe jason said he generally found these to be cheaper clicks than generic clicks but i'm not sure how that makes sense wouldn't your ad relevance on those keywords be way lower than generic terms or is it just a matter of everyone bidding on generic terms and only a few are bidding on separate brand names so jason What's your secret? Yeah, it's a it's a one hundred percent. It's the second thing. So yes, your your relevance, your quality scores, they will be lower on competitor keywords because uh, you're not relevant. You're you're not relevant. It, um, so, but the thing is, you don't have to worry about that that much because generally speaking, competitor keywords are bid bidded on less. And that's why they cost less because there's not as many people bidding on them. And when they, even when they do, they don't want to bid that high because you're not relevant. It doesn't seem to work well for most advertisers. So that is why the bidding is lower. The cost per click is lower because the generally the bidding is lower because there's less people bidding on it. And even when they bid on it, they're not as positive about it and they bid less. So Chris, next question. Fernando from YouTube. Hey guys. Yes. Big fan here. I would love a discussion. Well, you're not going to get that, Fernando. You're going to get a quick answer because we've been going <laughs> at this for a while, but we're going to give you something good about what to do when your campaign's doing amazing and suddenly seemingly out of nowhere, it tanks. What can we check? Do we need paid tools for this? How can we get it back on, trap, on track? Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Well, Fernando, um, I... Uh... I, I did answer you directly on YouTube, uh, or at least you have a, a, an answer there. But for our listeners who would also have a question like this, and you haven't heard this episode, go back and listen to, this will be linked uh, in, uh, on, on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, and also be linked in the episode notes. This particular episode, um, you'll see it in the, in the notes. The, the episode basically talks about exactly what you said, Fernando. It is what happens when your campaign goes to crap. Right. Uh, that is exactly uh, the, um, uh, the topic that we talk about. And we talk about solutions, what to look for, you know, how to solve the issue. So uh, we uh, highly recommend you go back because a lot of the times what we talk about, Jason, you and I have remained constant. I mean, the quality of the content that we provided for all these years has been constant. So, I mean, there is a lot of value that we talk about that we're yep. not going to talk about anymore because we've already done an episode on it. So episode can, 129 and uh, go to YouTube. Go what to do when a good Google ad campaign goes bad. 129. There you go. Yeah. So uh, you can listen to that for free on YouTube or uh, purchase the old episodes and listen to those in bulk. But what I'm saying is we've been consistent. Google ads has not changed that much. And if you want a ton of more information, you can always go back and listen to those old shows, which are available on paid All right. 
Last question from AJ from Atlanta, Georgia. Hey guys, I love the show and listen to it whilst I manage my client accounts. He said whilst. I like, he is a smart guy. I manage Google ads campaigns for water damage and restoration companies. And the average CPCs are freaking nuts. I'm talking upwards of 80 to $120 per click in Atlanta, Georgia for keywords such as water damage, restoration, water damage, cleanup, things like that. He has a few other comments in here about the daily budget and everything, but basically his question, Jason, is how would you go about managing these high CPC accounts? Help a brother out. All right. Well, AJ, um, two general ways to approach this. The first one is to try to work within what you can do and get a lower cost per click and try to get clicks when competing with people that are bidding a lot. So the first piece of advice, how do you get those low cost per clicks in a high cost per click industry? My only pro my only answer to do that is you just have to go as wide as possible. The mindset has to be, I'm going to show up lower uh, because I'm bidding less, but I still have to try to get clicks. So if I'm bidding lower, but how do I get clicks if I'm bidding lower and showing up lower? Well, the way you do that is you show up on more auctions because when you're lower, generally, your click to rate will be lower. So if you're only showing up on five searches a day and you're in position four, you may go weeks without getting a click because the, the click to rate on position four is very, very low and it's going to take a ton of impressions to get that one click. So what you have to do is you have to go as wide as possible and show up on as many relevant auctions as possible. So the ways you can do that, you can play around with your location. The wider your location, the more auctions you can show up on at a certain point. The location can't get any wider. So if the person only does business in uh, Atlanta, you can only do Atlanta. But if they're based in Atlanta, but they will travel 30 minutes outside of town, then you can go that wide. If they will travel two hours, then you can go that wide. So you go as wide as it makes sense for the business. Schedule, the wider you go with the schedule, the more opportunities you have to show up and get low cost per click clicks. So if you're really trying to get clicks and you're really struggling with that uh, low cost per click because other people are bidding so high, you just got to go 24 seven, I think, and just hope that people fill out the form uh, on your website when, they, when they're there very early in the morning or late at night. Don't forget about Bing. Again, it's about showing up as many search auctions as possible. So if you're on Bing, that gives you another chance to get clicks. And uh, that's the name of the game. Now, the other approach to this is not so nice. And the other approach to this is if other people are bidding that high and you can't, and Chris is seeing what I wrote, and I apologize in <laughs> advance for what I said, um, life's not fair. And if those other people are doing that, that means they're – you know, maybe some of them are just not making money and not doing it profitably. But if there's a lot of people bidding that much, it means someone's making money and someone figured out how to bid that high on that industry and still make money. So you as the average manager, you're the business owner as a business owner, you got to figure out a way to make it work. So can the landing pages be improved? Can the sales intake staff be improved? Um, can they charge more? Are they, are they undercharging their services? Um, can they look at it different where maybe we don't make a ton of profit on our AdWords traffic, but it's a little bit of a loss leader and we get those people on the back end over the coming years with more services um, or the second time they get this kind of product or they recommend their friends to us. So you really, you just got to think, how are other people able to do this? What can we improve? to be able to do it like them. That's the second approach. So there's those two kind of approaches and I respect the question a lot and I wish you the best. All right. Well, uh, we have a couple more questions and these are specific questions that are paid search trivia. Related. Don't try to escape it. Paid search trivia. I know oh, we're we... going long here, but paid search trivia, Chris, oh. <laughs> I love torturing them. Responsive oh. display ads, true or false? Res Responsive display. Is that, that's not a question. <laughs> I haven't finished because I realized we hadn't heard the true, the trivia music. So PST paid search trivia, please make the music and then we can continue. Thank you. <laughs> Responsive display ads. 
you have to include videos on them. True or false? Responsive display, false. You didn't know, of course not. Correct. Great answer. Okay. Videos are an option. I included them along with text and images and all that kind of stuff. I didn't like the experience, Chris. My remarketing ads were showing up on websites, but then they were also on YouTube as videos as well. And it was like mixing the data and I didn't know what was what. Yeah. And if I want to do YouTube, I'm going to do YouTube in a YouTube campaign and I'm going to focus on remarketing and getting leads from that and website traffic like I used to. So I took out the videos and you have that option. There yep. you go. Page for trivia. Thank you. That is, that is helpful. Yeah. Um, Cause I think I have a campaign that I'm getting too much YouTube stuff on my remarketing and you're that, welcome. Uh, you're welcome. That's a good, that's a good way to solve that. So we're jumping into a couple more questions. These are business related and they are not for general consumption, but you can be part of that elite club by going to our Patreon paying a very low monthly amount and hear this super specialized content that is for people that are agencies, managers, stuff like that. But in the meantime, uh, you will of course hear us for free every week on Monday. We'll be back here next time. Thanks for listening.